Take care, little fella. Bye, little Mindy. Top of the world, Ma. Miss McConnell, thank you. We'll be in touch. I'm gonna miss him. I'm so sorry things worked out like this. Yeah. Me too. I feel so bad. You understand I had to do that. I had to give him to those people. Oh, I know. I didn't know his parents loved him so much and wanted him back. I can't blame them. I don't know what to say. I just feel so sorry for you. Oh, you don't have to feel sorry for me. Now I know what it's like to be a father. Whew. It's really wonderful. <laughs> Even being a father for an hour is better than being never a father at all. You're really amazing. Well, there is something I've lived with for quite some time even Mindy doesn't know about it. Really? What is it? It happened November 24th, 1950, in Korea. It was late and we were on patrol. I remember trudging through the frozen mud in a miserable five below. Suddenly, the sky lit up with incoming shells, and we all scattered into the woods. I'd never seen trees broken off at the top before. Or men, either. Now, the shelling stopped, and I was surrounded by an eerie silence. Just then, I heard the frozen mud crunch behind me. I whipped around, and I saw somebody charging me with a fixed bayonet. Before he could get to me, I raised my rifle and I shot him. And he flew back into a shell hole, dead. Mindy, I killed a man. But, Dad, you had to. He would have killed you. He was the enemy, Uncle Fred. When he's three feet away, he's another human being. The look on his face as his life left him. There are nights when I still see it. I just wish I didn't have to pull that trigger. What's wrong? Remember I told you I was, I was sensitive to those spirits? We're not alone. Oh, no, we're not. There's another spirit in here. Oh. It's a gentle one, though. I think it wants to talk to you. Oh, no. I remember my little daughter playing peekaboo behind this chair after she'd made that caterpillar out of the egg garden. Mom? Remember that time you put your daddy's underwear on the puppy? Mom, is that you? Yes, dear. I'm fine. There's so many things I want to ask, but I don't know where to start. It's all right, darling. But I don't have much time, and there's something that I need to tell you. Remember that old teddy bear that you loved so much, and you, you hugged it till it was smooth, and the stuffing was coming out, and the eyes were gone, but you still didn't want to give it up? Yeah, but I don't understand what this has to do with... Oh, dear. You finally outgrew it. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with giving up things that you've outgrown. Goodbye, dear. Do you have to go? Yes. But don't worry, darling. Wherever you are, I'll always be with you. I love you, Mom. I mean, the spirit's gone. Yes, she has. Not to be very blunt, I'm throwing myself at your mercy. See, all, all we want to do is live here in peace. I... This world has given me very, very wonderful things. My wife, my son. And now I think it's time for me to give you something back. You see, the universe, it's, it's a very, very big place. But if you accept me today, 
I think we take the first step to make it a little bit smaller. Um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. Let's not blow it. I don't know what else to say. I'm just sorry that I didn't get a chance to see my dad. Well, you haven't left town yet. <laughs> Night's but a fetus. <laughs> Come, let's sit and talk in a kind of mellow way. We'll share some energy and be one, you know? You know, Tom, I really don't know Mr. Bickley very well. What was he like as a father? <laughs> well... <laughs> dad... Dad was uh, stubborn and cranky and grouchy and grumpy. Sounds like a law firm for dwarfs. <laughs> I couldn't wait till he got home at night. He always seemed to have time to play with me. So you're saying that he was a good father? Yeah, he really was unbelievable. You know, he gave the best piggybacks in the world and didn't even seem to mind when I left gum in his ear. <laughs> and I remember the time he bought me a baseball. 236 stitches on that thing. And I remember swimming toward the sound of his voice my first time across the pool. And he said, you can make it, Tom. You can make it, Tom, and I did. And then there was the last Christmas we spent at home. And Dad opened the picture that I drew of him with crayon. And he said, it looks just like me, Tom. I wish I had a father like that. And, you know, Mr. Bickley had those kind of feelings. I wonder why people always hide the feelings that give them the most pleasure. Oh, Mark, what? Everything is ruined. Huh. Maybe we've been robbed, man. No, I don't think. There's a stereo on the TV. Oh, look at my dishes. And my plants. Oh, oh no. It's not fern. <laughs> My dad bought me this when I moved in here. Oh, more. It's all right, men. You can sleep on your side for a while. <laughs> I wonder if they did anything to the attic. Let me check. You just stay here, you lock the door, and I'll be right back. Where are you gonna go? A little score I said with the friends. Dad, why didn't you tell me you were getting married? Oh, well, honey, I, 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 there were so many arrangements, and, and we were so busy, and... You could have called. Yeah, you're right, I could have. I'm sorry, honey. I just wish that I had been given a little time. Everything was just sort of thrown at me. And to tell you the truth, Dad, it was kind of like you'd completely forgotten about Mom, like she never existed. Oh, honey. I'll never forget your mother. She was the first woman I ever loved. I remember. I remember the way her hair smelled, her laugh. Her voice. Every detail about her is burned into my memory. I remember she used to grind her teeth in her sleep, and it drove me crazy. After she was gone, I missed that sound so much. Oh, Dad, I'm sorry. Honey, never think I've forgotten your mother. Chuck, I don't want to see you suffer like this. Oh, all my life, I never had a choice. You gave me the ability to make one at my choices. To die with dignity. Yeah, but you don't make it very easy for me. <laughs> Mark, you know what? We'd never finished our ice 
spy game. We were on F. I don't think I can play. Oh, please. Oh, please. Flea cop. Chuck, I can't go on doing this. It's... It's all right. I'm going to take care of you. I spy with my little eye. Friend. Back to you. I'm sorry to avoid you. I, I, I don't know why I can't say no. I, I guess I want people to like me. I hate myself for that. But I used to be able to say no. What do you mean? Well, before all this craziness started, I, my friends used to call up and go, Robin, come on, we're all going outside. So really, there's some gnarly waves. We can all hang out and I'd have to go, no, my mama said I have to stay inside and read Nietzsche tonight. <laughs> Later on, I guess I felt really afraid to, to say no to them because of that. then they all say, like, oh, Robin Williams, Mr. Smarty Pants Big Shot. Wow, you forgot your old friend. You can't lend me $10,000 for a new car. You won't do the Save the Shrimp benefit. This is none of my business, but it, it seems like if they're really your friends, they'd understand. But it seems to me you can't say no to a total stranger. All right. It also looks like you're probably taken advantage of a lot. You know, if you learn to say no, you'd probably have a lot more time to yourself. Uh, maybe that's the last thing I want. selfish of me, and I know no one lives forever, but I hope I, I leave this life before you do, because I never want to lose you twice. <laughs> <laughs> 